What's up y'all, it's Chris again with the Outdoor Millennium YouTube channel. Today I am going to be showing you how to do a European style mount on a deer head. So this is the head I'm going to be cleaning off. It's the same head from a hunt a couple days ago. I had some technical difficulties with the camera so I couldn't show the entire hunt but I did get the shot. It turned out to be pretty close to where I found the arrow later. So I brought that, got that boy back, dropped the body off at the processor, got a new camera, and now we're going to clean up the skull. First thing you want to do is try to cut away as much flesh as you possibly can, including all of the skin and the ears and the eyes and most of the nasal cavity. The more you can cut away, the easier it is to clean later. I'm going to pull the bottom jaw off and just remove it completely because I'm going to mount it on a board, but you can also keep the jaw and do the same thing to the jaw too. I'm not going to show most of the cutting away, but I'll skip to the part after I remove all of the skin, the lower jaw, and the ears. Well, I got all the skin, the eyes, and the lower jaw off. I still got the brain inside, but that's going to get rid of in the next step. So. I'm going to cut off the skin at the base of these antlers to get them flush, and then we'll go to step two, which is going to be boiling the skull. This took me about an hour and a half, but I have never done it before, so after you do it more and more often, you can get, you get a lot quicker at it. Also, use a sharp knife. My knife was super dull, so it made removing the jaw very difficult. An uh, easy way to measure the age on these deer is by looking at their teeth. So I got the lower jaw right here. And an adult deer will have six molars. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. The last molar has three cusps. And up until about age four, the condition of this last cusp right here is a really good indicator of about how old this deer is, give or take. So getting a little closer. You can see that you've got these two that are full, and this one has come up to the same level but it's a little bit worn already. That's usually an indicator of about a two and a half to a three and a half year old deer. After they get older than that, this cusp will wear down flat and then it'll start to actually slope downwards as it wears out. So a rough estimate of the age of this deer is about two and a half to three and a half years old. All right, got it pretty clean. Got the, all the skin and fur removed around the antler crowns. Now we're ready to, for step two. So after you remove as much meat and skin and material off of that skull that you can, we're gonna boil it. And the idea of boiling is that you'll boil the rest off the bone and then hit it with a low pressure washer to knock off everything, especially out of the nasal cavity and the brain cavity since you can't really get to that with a knife. Boiling it will kind of liquefy that and make it a lot easier to just knock out with that pressure washer. When you're boiling it, do not boil it inside your house. It does not smell good. I've boiled smaller heads like bobcat skulls in the past and it smells bad. A deer skull is probably going to smell even worse. So if you don't have a propane or some kind of grill or something that you can heat up that pot, maybe you could do it over a fire. Just don't cook it inside. Also, it's best to get a dedicated pot to boiling your skull because it's kind of gross. You don't really want to cook with the same pot. So you can buy a cheap pot at Walmart for like five or six dollars and that'll kind of be your boiling pot. Alright, we've got the water on the heater. I'm gonna let it get hot and boil them before I add the skull to it. Alright, we got the water up to a boil. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of dish soap, just regular dish soap. It helps cut some of the grease on the skull itself makes the flesh a lot easier to remove. This is going to be kind of tricky. I'll come back and check on it in half an hour and see what the meat looks like. If you're doing this boiling technique with smaller skulls, like I've done possums, coons, and bobcats, if you boil the skull, whenever you're boiling the skull, don't let it sit on the bottom of the pot. If you do, you'll get like kind of a black spot on the bone where the bone starts to burn a little bit. So you can hang it by a string or safety wire or something in the middle of the pot. And when the skull starts to float, that means it's done, you're ready to go to the next step. But when you put it in imme immediately, it'll sink to the bottom. So have some kind of string or something to keep it from resting on the bottom. And then once it starts to float, 
Once it gets that buoyancy, you're done cooking it and you're ready to go on to the next step. My pot is a little bit small, so that's going to be a kind of a challenge. I'm going to have to get creative with the angle a little bit and try to get that back part because most of the brain is in that back part. So we'll let the front simmer down for 20 more minutes and then we'll try to rotate it around, maybe flip it so the back half of the skull is in the water. Ideally a bigger pot is the solution to this, but you gotta do what you gotta do with what you got. All right, got about 30 minutes and it stanks. So let's take a look and see what it looks like. So even though this that part was out of the water, it has cooked pretty, pretty good. You see what we're looking at? Well, it doesn't look terrible, but I think I'm gonna put it back in for a little bit longer. Yeah, I put it back in for another 15 minutes or so, and then I'll pull it out. And see how that flesh comes off with a low, low setting on a pressure washer. All right, I'm gonna pull it out and see what it looks like. Pretty brown on the bottom. Take it over to the board. See how easy this stuff scrapes off. off a lot of the leftover tissue. There's still a little bit of the nasal cavity left and I gotta get back and boil the top half. All that white is the uncooked stuff that did not want to come off with the pressure washer. Which will also help me get the brain out. So a lot of the meat did come off. One of the hardest parts is this nasal cavity. This middle white piece is actually cartilage so that has to come out before you're done otherwise it'll start to stink if you just finish up so it's definitely not boiled enough, it's still super stiff. So I'm gonna have to boil that part again too to get it to loosen up to come out. If you overboil your skull, these nasal bones will get super soft and fall out like cartilage. So the fact that they're still stiff is good. I got more time to boil this thing to loosen up this cartilage and knock off the rest of this tissue that's still in here. For my second boil, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the water. The water in the first pot was super greasy and super gross. So I'm going to replace the water, add more soap to it, and it hopefully can pull some more grease out of that skull because there's a lot of grease and all the fat tissue. All right, well, it's another day with that skull. That electric pressure washer just wasn't getting the job done. There's a ton of tissue left on it, so I'm going to a gas pressure washer, which is significantly more powerful. Just got to be really careful using these because it's really easy to blow out the nasal bones and just rip the skull apart with a pressure washer this powerful. So I'm going to have to keep it kind of far away from the bone when I'm doing that. But this should work. I soaked it overnight so everything's nice and soft. We'll see if we can blast it off with this one. Well that high power pressure washer did a lot better. <clears throat> There's still a little bit of meat on the top because the pot I was using couldn't boil that top part of the skull so I need to get a bigger pot to boil that part off. I also popped out the ear bones that were sitting right there which made it a lot easier to clean out the brain cavity. There's still a little bit of tissue in the nasal cavity but that should come out next time I boil it with the bigger pot. But I'm gonna have to sit this down because I have a wedding tomorrow. Alright it's another day. I got a bigger pot big enough for the entire skull to fit in. I'm heating the water up. Once it starts to boil, I'm going to add this peroxide to it. It's like a lotion peroxide, 40%. You get it at any, uh, any salon store. It's pretty easy. It's like four bucks. It's pretty cheap. Just make sure you don't get any of that on your skin. And make sure you don't get any of that on the actual antler, because it'll bleach that bone. And if you get on the antler, it'll bleach the antler too. So I'm going to wrap it up with saran wrap and electric tape before I put it in there. Otherwise it will ruin the antlers too. Alright, I've got the peroxide in the pot and it's boiling away. It's already gotten a little bit lighter but I don't know how much of this peroxide to add so I'm just gonna keep adding it kind of until it's starting to look how I want it to look and then we'll pull it out. 
that ain't looking too bad. Got to rinse it off so the peroxide doesn't mess it up further. And then we'll be done. I've got to get this saran wrap and tape cut off before I rinse it off. Make sure there's none of that peroxide under there discoloring the antlers. Got it all cleaned up. It's a lot wider than it was. Now you can add a kind of like a shining thing to make it look more glossy after you're done. I'm not going to since I'm just going to hang it up in my garage. But that is another step you could possibly do. But it turned out pretty good. A couple days work and it's all all done. Got all the nasal cavity all cleaned out. Not bad at all.